This is Geometry Lesson 1-5, Postulates for Points and Lines in Euclidean Geometry. Different descriptions of points and lines lead to, to very different types of geometry. To make clear the kinds of ge geometry we are studying, we begin by making assumptions called postulates. Postulates explain undefined terms and serve as a starting point for logically deducing or proving other statements. A statement that follows from postulates definitions or other previously proved statements is called a theorem. Notice that postulates are chosen and theorems are proven. In this course we are going to be studying specifically Euclidean geometry. We touched upon it when we discussed points and lines in synthetic geometry and coordinate plane geometry because those are pieces of Euclidean geometry. The rest of the course we will be looking at Euclidean geometry as a whole. And we start out off with some undefined terms, point, line, and plane. And using those three undefined terms, we're going to start with our first assumption or our first postulate, things that we assume to be true, so that we have the first pieces of our rule book, so to speak. The point, line, plane postulate is broken down into three parts in this lesson. We're just going to look at three parts of it right now. The first part is part A. It's called the unique line assumption. Through any two points there's exactly one line. If the two points are in a plane, the, li the line containing them is in the plane. The second part B, the number line assumption. Every line is a set of points that can be put into a one-to-one -one correspondence with the real numbers, with any point on it corresponding to zero and any other point corresponding to one. And the third part discussed here is the dimension assumption. There are at least two points in space. Given a line in a plane, there's at least one point in the plane that is not on the line. And given a plane in space, there is at least one point in space that is not in the plane. Now remember, the point line plane postulate is the very beginning of our rule book. And so we, we put some things in it that seem to be very, very basic. But even so that they're very basic, I chose to give you a table here to kind of put this point line plane postulate into some easier concepts or an easier way to look at things. So the unique line assumption, remember, basically two points determine a line. And a line can be labeled. Here I have an example of a line. And we label it in geometry a few different ways. We can name it by two points that land on the line or fall on the line, or make the line, I should say. Here I've chosen A and B, or you can do B, A. It doesn't matter what order you place the points, but those points have a line over the top with two arrows, arrows going in either direction. The other way you can name a line is using an italics L or an italics letter. Here it's an L. You often will put it just beside the line. So these are different ways you can name the line A, B listed above. The other part of this is the number line assumptions that we talked about in part B. And just another way to think about that is just in general, any line in Euclidean geometry can be made into a number line. But I think the other main p point here is that lines, any line in Euclidean geometry has infinitely many points. So I have a point here that, is, that makes up the line and I have a point here but there's another one in between and there's another one in between and there's another one in between there. Between any two points in Euclidean geometry there's always one more point. There's an infinite many, uh, infinitely many points. And the third concept is dimension ath assumption. I think of this one as just permission to say that we have dimension in our world. So first is that there are at least two points in space. If we have a line that's in a plane, there's at least one point that's not on the line. And then given space, uh, or given a plane in space, we have a line and a point all can be on that plane, but then we also know that if there's space, we have a point that's not in that plane. I would like you now to stop the video, try these three examples by reading the statement and picking A, B, or C to support that statement. A, B, and C are coming from the point line plane postulate. When you have finished, turn the video back on and you, we will go through each answer.
Number five, locating point P not on plane M. So basically what that's saying is that we have point out in space, so that's giving us permission to say we have dimension, so that's C. Measuring the length of a segment by holding a ruler to it, that's the number line assumption. Every number, every line can be, ha can have a number correspondence. And the number seven is graphing the line equation with equation y equals 2x by connecting the ordered pairs 1, 2, and 2, 4. As you see here, we have two points. Two points determine a line, so that would be a unique line assumption. I'm going to now read you a part from page 34 in Lesson 1-5 in the section titled Intersecting and Parallel Lines. Using the point line plane postulate, we can deduce other properties of points and lines. A reasonable question is to consider is how many points can two different lines intersect? In algebra, if you graph the system x plus 2y equals 5 and 2x plus y equals 4 on the coordinate plane, you would find that 1, 2 is the only point of intersection of these two lines. You also know that sometimes lines do not intersect and sometimes two equations describe the same line. We can show that two different lines cannot intersect at two different points. Supplo suppose lines m and n intersect at point P, right here. If there were another point Q where the lines intersected, then both M and N would pass through P and Q. However, the unique line assumption says that only one line can pass through the two, the points P and Q. So the two lines can intersect at only one point. Which leads us now to the line intersection theorem that two different lines intersect in at most one point. For the skills of this lesson, we are going to be spending some time with um, systems of linear equations. We are going to be looking at those systems and finding the intersect points of the lines or finding that the lines don't intersect at all. And then those lines would be parallel and we will define that later on in this lesson. Here I have example one. It's actually the guided example from page 34 in your reading. So I'd like you to read along with me and, and work through this problem. Basically, we, we want to find the coordinates of the intersection of the two lines whose equations are 3x minus 4y equals negative 17 and 5x plus 6y equals a negative 3. So here we have a system of two linear equations and we know that they will only intersect at one point or at most one point. Because both these equations are in standard form, it's best to use the linear combination method in s for fo solving this system or for finding our intersect point. Remembering back to algebra, in order to use linear combinations, we want to manipulate our equations so that one set of values can be eliminated. So if I've chosen to multiply the top line by 3 and the bottom equation by 2. So in doing so, that results in 3 times 3x equaling 9x, 3 times negative 4y is negative 12y, and negative 17 times 3 is negative 51. Now working with the second equation, 2 times 5x is 10x, 2 times 6y is 12y, and a negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. So here I have my two equations, they're equivalent to the ones I started with. They just work in a way now that I can isolate, or I'm sorry, not isolate, but I can eliminate my y values. So now I have, I can do a combination here. I can combine these two equations and get 19x equaling a negative 57. And when I solve for x here, divide both sides by 19, I get x equaling a negative 3. So I have the first point of my coordinate being negative 3. Now I can go ahead and take my negative 3 and substitute it into either one of my equations. I've chosen to use the first one. So 3 times the negative 3 minus 4y equals a negative 17. 3 times the negative 3 is negative 9 minus 4y equals negative 17. Move the negative 9 over, which leaves me with a negative 4y equaling negative 8. And divide both sides by negative 4, so that leaves me with y equaling 2. So that's my second coordinate, my y value. So now I have the coordinate negative 3, 2, the, or the coordinates of that intersection point are negative 3, 2. 
So that's the point that both lines have in common. The second way we can find intersections, the intersection point between two lines, is to use our CAS. I'm going to work through this. I have the CAS drawing right here. We will do this in class. I will show you how to graph an equation on your CAS calculator, and we will be able to do the um, find the intersection point in class, but I'll show you right here. So I graphed the first equation, y equals 2x plus 13, you can see that line here, and y equals x plus 9 intersects here, see that y intercept at 9 and at 13, and where they, the two lines intersect is at negative 4, 5. So we can verify that that is in fact the correct point by inserting this these coordinates in, val in place of x and y. So we put negative 4 in place of x and 5 in place of y, and we find that 2 times the negative 4 is negative 8 plus 13, in fact, equals 5. And we do it again with the second equation, negative 4 plus 9 does, in fact, equal 5. So this point we have verified does meet both equations, so that is the intersect point for these two lines and it's also the solution to this system. When coplanar lines do not intersect in exactly one point, they are called parallel. As you can see in your textbook on page 35, there's a picture of some railroad tracks there, and they are parallel to each other. So here we have a system in example 3, and where it's been graphed on, on a CAS, um, we notice the y-intercept on this one, 2x plus 3, it crosses the y-axis at 3, and this one, 2x plus 5, crosses the y-axis at 5, and both of them have the same slope of 2, so both of them are rising at the same pace and, and moving horizontally at the same pace. These lines never intersect, therefore they are considered to be parallel. But we could also do it mathematically, we could see that the both equations are set equal to y, so therefore they should be equal to each other. So I'll go ahead, 2x plus 3 equals 2x plus 5. Well, you notice that 2x would cancel, 3 does not equal 5. This is not a true statement, so these lines will never intersect. Since 2x plus 3 is not equal to 2x plus 5, the lines are considered to be parallel. I have purposely left off examples for you to try on your own here. We are going to do a considerable amount of work on these three types of problems where we have, where we find the intersect points of linear equations and when we identify parallel lines in class next time. So this concludes the end of lesson 1-5.